Shalom, everyone. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about studying your Bible, okay, or your the scriptures, um, <clears throat> and how important it is that you um, develop a a certain study uh, style when it comes to studying the scriptures. Um, and the reason why I'm going here is a few scriptures I came across as I was reading um, this morning, and and I thought that um, these scriptures really um, need to be talked about. But anyway, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. And I want you to look at uh, verse 18 through 20. Verse 18 through 20. Eliah, I'm going to let you read it. Therefore shall ye lay up these words, these my words, in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as front frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest up, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the door of thine house and upon thy gates. Okay. <clears throat> I remember the first time I actually read the scriptures a few years ago, right when I had um, first received the Ruach, the set apart spirit. And this was one of the, the first uh, scriptures that I felt actually led to read. And I, when I read it, I took a literal too. And I was, I used to uh, take certain scriptures and actually post it over my door. Uh, to my room, I was a young man at the time, still at home with my mother, basically, and my brothers was living with me, and I was a young man, and I, I had these scriptures, I'd post them all over my room, basically, just scriptures everywhere, you know, I had become very, um, what's the word for it, I, let's just say I love Yah's word, you know what I mean by that, when I say I love his word? I really and truly love Yah's words, okay, and so that I, it was, it was, it, it, it was so good to me until there were times where I, I'd rather study than to do other things, and even right now, if I had the time, I would probably study all day, every day, because it's the one thing that I completely enjoy, okay, but I hope to, um, kind of give you all some reasons why you should study your word more and why it's important that you do because in these day and time in the time that we're in there's so much um false teachings and and preachings that's going forth and over the internet um on, on television there are people writing all types of books and it's just it's a lot of false teaching out there and it's important that you uh, develop a study habit yourself you know instead of just getting it from all out here because it's just it's a mess out here but anyway notice what it says in this passage here. it says um, teach ye shall teach them to your children and speak of them when thou sittest in thine house in other words, when you sit down at your table or you just sit down at your couch to relax or something speak about Yah's word Pull up your scriptures and speak about his word, you know, because there's something in it for you. Now, you remember when we were talking about meditation and we were talking about the word and it says something about take heed to how you hear and take heed to what you hear. And it says that measure uh, you meet, it should be measured unto you. Okay. Now you think about what we're talking about. You're still talking about the word, still talking about study, right? If you don't put no time into actual study in this word, then that's the measure you're putting into it. That's what you're going to get out. You understand? It's, it's It kind of reminds me, we're, we're kind of like this here as, as people, okay? We have become so um, comfortable with society in the way that it is, okay? Until... We don't want to do things ourselves. So what we do is, it's kind of like the way we are when it comes to food. 
you got all these fast food restaurants everywhere. So instead of us going and making something that's healthy for ourselves, we rather go out here and just get this stuff because it's already prepared and you don't have to do nothing to get it. Laziness. Laziness, exactly. Well, it's the same thing going on spiritually. That's why we're scouring the internet. We 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 um going through the internet and we're trying to find some teaching and some preaching or something that because we're hungry we're hungry you know and a person gets hungry the first thing you got up in that car run to a fast food restaurant and eat something that's gonna kill him well it's kind of like that same thing going on spiritually you know there's so many teachings going for you're hungry for the word you want the word you want the word and and it, it ain't, it, I'm going to tell you now, you've got to be careful. It's a lot of false teaching out there. So it's better that you learn how to dig in the word and study the word for yourself. You understand? Now, I, I agree The most high have some teachers out here that are teaching some very good word. Okay? But I'm a witness to this fact. Okay? Everybody that's out there teaching, there's no one out there. That's a hundred percent in their teaching, and everybody's not called of Yah. And everybody, that's right, isn't called of Yah. So, so you're gonna find errors in, in just in just about everybody's teaching because we're like growing. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody's growing. No one has attained. You know, that's what Shaul was talking about. So, because a person is growing and growing, what he may teach on. At, when he's um, 40 years old What he might teach at the age of 40 may, may be a little different when he turns 50 Because he's studied Growing and he's learning more and more You see So that's why we gotta study the word for ourselves um, I was going to say to Same way people run to these restaurants Like Burger King and stuff They run to um, They local church just the same way They run to these restaurants Exactly the Burger King is Baptist <laughs> about this king here, yeah. exactly. And he run to the restaurant. He run to the um to the churches and to the, everybody's trying to get some food. But over the years, when I when I after I first received a ruach, I developed a pattern for studying, and I discovered. I said, man, this is very important that you study. Okay. Now I want to share this scripture with you real quickly here. This scripture is in um, Second Timothy. Chapter 2, and it's going to be verse 15 through 18. And this is what it says. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doeth a canker of whom is Herminius and Politius, Politus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection has already passed and overthrow the faith of some. Now, this passage, this, this passage is very important. He said, first of all, study to show yourself approved. Why? Because you got people that are teaching doctrines and teachings that will cause people to fall from the faith. That's why you got to study to show yourself approved. He said, a workman. You hear that? A workman unto Yah. Someone that's going to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, I'm going to show you what that rightly divide is about, okay? It, you cannot take every passage of the scripture and apply it to yourself, okay? You know why? Because when Shaul and, and other people were writing certain passages of scriptures, they were writing them to certain people. You understand what I'm saying? So, though some scriptures might not apply to you, okay? For instance, if I was to write or preach a sermon against homosexuals, okay? Well, is that for you? 
if you're not homosexual, then it's not for you, right? Plenty of examples in the Bible. Exactly. Like children obey your parents, but what if you're 90 years old? Exactly, exactly. So you just got to be, you got to look at, at the scriptures and you got to rightly divide the word of truth when you come across the scriptures. Now, it, it's very important that you do this. Because there's so many scriptures. I mean, when you look at this, the, just the 66 books that's in the Bible, and there was a lot more than that. And then you got apocryphals and you got other scriptures. You just got to you gotta learn how to read these things and, and look into these things and rightly divide these things and understand uh, what is being said. You know, another scripture says, and all that getting, get understanding. Okay? So... Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, one thing I want to bring out that he says here, he says um, that who concerning the truth have erred. Talked about these two particular people. Concerning the truth, they have erred. There's, there's many of people out there that have done the same thing concerning the word of Yah. They have erred, you see? So... We, we just got to understand what's going on here because there are plenty of doctrines and teachings that are out here. Now, one, one passage I'm um, sure who made this statement. This is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do you hear that? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These are teachings that have come forth to do what? So to seduce you. Mm -hmm. Doctrines of devils. You understand that? So we got to, this is why it's important that we learn how to study the scriptures for ourselves. Now, I understand that if, 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 if studying the word is boring to you, then you have a problem. Because this is the word of our Elohim, of Yah. This is the word of Yah. And Yah, he wants you to draw closer to him. You understand what I'm saying? He wants you to draw closer to him, but it's hard for you to draw close to him if you don't have any type of knowledge or understanding about him. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why he wants you to study. He says, my people are what? Destroyed. For the lack of knowledge. You understand me? Now how you going to get that knowledge? You're going to have to study to get this knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to have to take time out and study. The same way you take time out to do these other things that you consider fun, take time out to study. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, every last one of you, if you took time out to study more and more, you will see how fun it is. It actually brings joy to me when I'm studying the Word and I come across um, um, just, just different information and knowledge and the Most High um, uh, show me different things. It's exciting. You know, I get a lot of joy from it, you know. Um, listen to this scripture here. This is in 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Deborah, I'm going to have you read it. An account that the long suffering of Yah is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Now, this scripture here is very important here. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because there are some teachings that's going forth. There are a lot of people that are teaching that, uh, our brother, that, that Paul, Shaul, okay, is a false apostle okay and they shun a lot of the teachings of of shahu of paul okay but if you notice here this is peter and peter is telling you okay he's saying hey listen you all he said our brother paul he called him his brother 
What did he say about him? He says, according to the wisdom given unto him, I have written unto you also in all his epistles. Oh, talking about all those letters that he wrote. Okay? The letters to the Romans, to the Ephesians, to the Colossians, to um, Corinthians, to all these different places. He's talking about these epistles that Paul wrote. And what does he say? Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. So he said these things are going to be hard to be understood. These things Paul talking about, they're hard to understand. And notice what he says about it. He says, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle. And that word is wrestle. If you look it up in the Greek, it's wrestle. So the unstable and unlearned, what do they do? They wrestle with these scriptures because they unlearned. Okay? So they look at the scriptures and they just so unlearned and they just, and they, what do they do with it though? When they wrestle with it, they twist it. You see that? They twist the scriptures and other scriptures unto what? Their own demise, their own destruction. Do you see it? So Peter was trying to tell people, hey, listen, y'all, don't wrestle with the scriptures like that. Because you're going to twist them and twist them for your own destruction. Now, I said that to say this here, okay? These doctrines that go forth sometimes, we got to understand is that uh, some things are hard to be understood, okay? I'm 50, how old am I? 51. <laughs> I'm 51 years old, okay? And let me say this to you, okay? I am a humble person when it comes to the word, okay? And I'll tell you why I say that. It's because I know it's impossible for me to know all things. I could be a 200-year-old man, and trust me, it's still going to be a good percentage of things for me to know. It, I would have barely touched the tip of the iceberg, okay? That's how much it is to be known. You understand? So then, based on that, that's why we got to keep humble when it comes to studying Yah's word. And don't be so quick to say, oh, this person is off and that person is off. You read in the scriptures and you, and you think that, oh, because this don't line up and you don't understand that. Well, why don't you do this here? Why don't you just wait then until the Most High reveal these things to you and give you understanding that it makes sense so that the scriptures don't seem all warped in your head because they it's getting warped, you know? You gotta understand they're translated by who? They, yeah, the scriptures were translated by who? Think about it. it. Yeah, you mean you, you got Edomites, uh, uh, folk um, uh, interpreting the scriptures and rewriting scriptures and, and you know, uh, so based on all of this, I think that we should all... Um, try to study a little closer these scriptures and and don't twist scriptures okay but basically just study the word you know um it talked about how um a young person now note, notice what it says here when it talked about when shaul would say says unlearned okay which some people can interpret as being a young person or a, a, a person that's unlearned New, new to the faith. Okay, now listen to this other scripture here. This is in Ephesians, chapter four, uh, verse fourteen. This is what it says: That henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sly of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Uh, now, did you hear what that just said? Huh? So we got to be careful because this is what's out there. This is, it's out there. Okay? It's out there. Study to show yourself approved. Seek the Most High and let Him guide you because just like the scripture says, you don't want to be, and that was my, 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 my whole thing when I was coming up too. I didn't want to be tossing for, um, to and fro. I didn't want to be going after every wind and doctrine. I just didn't want to be one of those people that the scripture referred to as a simple person. 
I refuse to be that. I said, I'm not going to be a simple person. I'm going to study this word. I'm going to study this word. I ain't, I ain't going to just go to him just because somebody said I believe it. You know, you're supposed to research this to research even the things that I say. Research it yourself. Get your Bible out. Get your dictionaries out. You know, and, and, and I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going to share with you some of the books that I have that you can go and purchase and, and things that you can do. There, there are software that's online that will help your studying. But I guarantee you if, you, if you just dig down until you're going to discover some things that, that no one else can even teach you. And I'll tell you why. Because the Ruach know them. You understand? And the Ruach is going to do what? Lead and guide us into what? All truth. You understand? So I want to share a couple more scriptures with you. And then I'm going to share some of the books that I have here. Um, here's another scripture. <clears throat> it says, this is in uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Okay. Uh, Deborah, I'll let you read it. Now I beseech you, brethren. Mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they are such, serve not our Yahshua, but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. There go again, the simple. Who are they going to see? The simple. Mm -hmm. But if you get in your word, you're not simple. Mm -hmm. You understand? You're not simple minded. You see? So you can't be, you got, that's why you got to get in the word. That's why can't nobody come up to me and say, hey, you know what? I'm the Messiah. I'll be like, dude, get out of here. You know, can't nobody come to me and say, hey, you know what? I'm the comforter. You know, I, I, I'll not do it. You're not the comforter. Okay. See you. You know, can't nobody come to me and say, I'm the Holy Spirit. You, you the set apart spirit, huh? Really? Get out of here. You know, you, you because you done studied the word and you know this is just false stuff. You know? You know it because you know the word. You study. <laughs> I tell you, it can, it, can, it, it can get frustrating sometimes because people are believing just about anything. You got to ask yourself this question, okay? Think about what I'm going to say here. Jim Jones, okay? I th if I'm correct, it was more than a thousand people that all drank his poison kool-aid okay <laughs> you mean to tell me that somebody can have that kind of control over your mind to where they can have you can just here yeah, drink this we'll be in heaven here yeah, just drink it and you sit I, there I and it, mm, 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 you know <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what to sit there and accept something like that. yeah and some of these men were calling themselves the the, the Mashiach Call themselves the Christ. I'm the Christ. They got this guy in in, in um, um, Siberia now that calls himself the Christ, and people just flocking to him, selling everything that they have, and just giving him the money and just flocking to him. Well, if you, you know? Guy, what you mean you're for, bro? <laughs> we just get out of jail too. Yeah, <laughs> I just got out of jail. <laughs> but it's just it's just you know I sit here and I look at this stuff and I say, man, how can people be this gullible? You know, and that's because people are like lost minds. Because they uh, feed me, feed me. They search in the internet. Oh, oh, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Yeah. And, and, and you got the power to be fed from the Ruach himself if you study to show yourself approved. And I'm going to show you how. It's simple. It's so simple. You understand? It's very simple. Okay. Uh, I got a couple of more scriptures I want to share. Um, this scripture here is in John, 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 26 and 27. And this is what it says. It says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye abide in him. Now, one thing that I've always done in studying the word is I would always try to make sure that I'm led in my study. Now, how do you do that? Simple. 
Sometimes the Most High will put things on your heart. And when he put those things on your heart, you dab into that study on it. You know why? Because it's been put on your heart and it and because it, it's on your heart, it's some excitement there. Because your mind is not saying, man, I wonder what that's about. Man, I need to look into that. Man, I need to research that. You know why I say study that way? It's because then you won't get tired out by just flipping page at a time. Okay, I'm studying um, Acts chapter 1 today. Okay, tomorrow Acts chapter 2. Okay, like Acts chapter 3. Yeah, like a school assignment. You want to be the land of the Ruach when you do your studying. Now, now, if you want to read your Bible chapter after chapter after chapter, that's good too. Scripture after scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's all good and dandy too. But be led of the Spirit in your studying. Okay, because there are things that he wants to reveal to you, but if you if you if you the one, what did David say? He said, "What thou prepares a table right before me." Did David say, "I prepare the table"? He said, "Thou prepares the table." That's what the Most High wants to do for you. He wants to prepare that table for you. But if you so busy you trying to prepare your own table, then you 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 don't know what to eat. <laughs> Let me share something with you. I want you to think about this, right? When we look at spiritual understanding, okay, there is enough information about Yah and about this world and about the universe and about the spiritual things, the angels and demons and, and about the scriptures. There's enough things to be known that could fill every library in this world we live in. Okay? So, now, you are going to all of this knowledge and you're looking at it. And you're going to just pick. Oh, give me that. Oh, give me this. Give me this over here. You don't know what to pick. The Most High is trying to get you to a certain place of growth in your life. Okay? But you don't know what to get. What to pick that's going to get you to that level. He does. You, you get what I'm saying? So if you allow him to mold you and give you this and give you that, give you that, he will skip. I'm telling you, you will jump over years. Years. You will gain so much ground because he's giving you detailed things that's going to build you a lot faster than you could possibly do it just by reading the scriptures page from page from page from page. And, and 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 you're being led of the Ruach. You get what I'm saying? So basically, you know, the uh, it, it's amazing too in this in this passage. Notice what it says here. It also said, um, concerning them that seduce you. See, it's back to the seducing spirits and what? Doctrines of devils. They're trying to seduce you with what? Lies. Lies. That's right. Hypocrisy. You know? All of this kind of stuff that's going to trip you up and, and cause you to not really grow in Yah. You see, because trust me on it, the devil, Satan, he don't want you to grow. He don't want you to become a warrior. He don't want you to become a person that's going to um, allow the most high to prepare your meal. He don't want you to do that. You understand? So you got to look at this whole thing and you got to say, hey. Okay, I get it now. Let me study. Let me get into the word and just be led of the Ruach. Let the Ruach teach you and dive into this word. I guarantee you, you will be so happy. You'll get so much joy out of it until you would know what to do. You'll have so much joy. Okay, so I want to start off by sharing with you some of the books that I have here. I'm, and I'm doing this because um, I've had several people ask me what Bible do I study from? What apocryphals and what other books do I uh, study from, basically? But I got, I got a number of books here I want to share with you. Um, first of all, let me show you this one here. Uh, this is basically just a King James Bible. It's a little worn out. Yeah, it's worn out. <laughs> I don't wore this one out. But it's a uh, King James is a keyword um, study Bible. It has the Greek and Hebrew... Um, um, dictionary in this Bible okay which I like to use this Bible but I don't like the the old English I don't care less for the old English and and some of the uh, Christian lingo and all of that stuff I, I care less for it but I like to use it to study because um, I like the Hebrew and Greek that's attached to it. it makes it quicker for me to just 
if I'm looking up certain things and I, I, I like to keep him with me, okay? Um, but it's just a, you know, it's just a good Bible. I've, I've had this Bible here for years now, probably years. 20 years or more, you know, okay? Um, now, one of my favorites is this one here, okay? This is called the Scriptures. Excellent Bible. This Bible, the names have been restored in the in the, in this in the scriptures. A certain um, lingo has been changed too. For instance, the word cross isn't in this Bible. You'll find a uh, stake in the Bible because he was he was uh, hung on a stake. Okay, if you look it up in Greek, okay, or um, uh, a tree, basically. Okay, so. You know, a lot of the things have been changed in here. Like, for instance, if you look up Egypt, some of the place names have been changed back to the original names, Mizraim, and things like that. So, I strongly recommend it. I always use it along with the other Bible because it helps me to see what's been changed, what hasn't been changed, and it's pretty good. I love reading from this, you know. Um, but anyway, you can get this Bible here on the internet. All you got to do is type up the scriptures, Okay. There's a site to sell them, and they're an excellent price. At the time I brought this one, I think I paid $29 for it. It's a hard cover right now. I think it's going $19. I think they have soft covers that you can get for only $14. Excellent. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this one here is called the Word of Yah, and it's New Testament only. This was translated from the Aramaic Scriptures, and... It's um, it's pretty good. A lot of the, the, the terms have been changed also. Original names have been restored in this um, scripture. Uh, they use the name Yahuwah in this one for um, the father. And for the son, I think his name is... Uh, let's see if I can find it in here. I'll go to Matthew. And he used the name Yah too um, in the script in this book, but um, it, it's pretty good, you know. I, I like to use it when I'm studying, um, just to see if there's any type of changes, you know, in different things that I may be studying. I may want to say, well, wait a minute, let's see, let's see how they translated it in this book. So that's what I use the different Bibles for, you know. But anyway, um, you can find this one on on the internet also. It's called the Word of Yah, original scriptures. Now, <clears throat> this is called the Septuagint with the Apocrypha. Okay, um, it's I think it's the Old Testament only. Yes, it is. It's the Old Testament only Septuagint, and it was translated from the Greek to English. And there's actually Greek and English in this book. It's Greek on one side of the page and English on the other side. But um, I just recently purchased this one a few months ago. And um, I use it also to study and check words and everything. But it's called the Septuagint with the Apocrypha. You can get it very cheaply on Amazon or whatever. Uh, pretty good. I have a really big library, so it may take a minute. Uh, this book here I actually got for free. They were giving it away for free on the Internet. And I, I so happen to... to Right at the right time was able to get it, but I love this this Bible. It's um Aramaic English New Testament And you can find him on the internet too for roughly about thirty nine dollars But it has the Aramaic writing on one side of the page and the English on the other side Okay um, Now this book here uh, A lot of you know Simon uh, Rabbi Simon. Okay. I ended up purchasing this book now, there are some things about his commentary that I do not like, okay? It's because he's one of those believers that believe that Paul was a false apostle, okay? And um, people, they, it's back to what Peter said. They wrestle the scriptures for their own destruction. And I don't recommend this one too much for you unlearned because some of y'all will read this stuff. And some of the commentary, and you just, you know, if you can't, if you don't know how to hold on to truth, then you, you can be swept away, you know, very easily by some things. So I don't recommend it for the unlearned, but those of you that are learned and you know the truth and you can't be easily 
um, swayed by you know some of the lingo against Paul, then you you good then you can you can purchase this one. But it's a very expensive um, book here. <clears throat> now, these books here are golden. I really love these um, for studying. These are called the Interlear Bible. You can purchase these on the internet. There's a set of forum you can purchase on the internet for roughly about $49. The reason why these are golden is I like to study. Okay? And when I study, that's say that we don't have power. Okay? If you run out of power and you don't have any electricity or um, you can't access the internet for this and for that, that's where these books come in handy because they have the Hebrew and Greek and every single word in these in these um, Bibles have been translated. And they have the text, the original text, and everything is right here in, in these. So they are an excellent books, an excellent set of books to purchase. Okay. Now, why should we buy a lot of books like this for study? Because you're going to need them. <laughs> you might not need all of these, but I strongly recommend that you get at least two or three different Bibles. Okay, get the, the um, original names Bible. You need that original names Bible. Okay, and I recommend that you may get these interlear Bibles because it's going to open up your studying like you wouldn't believe it because you'll be able to look at different um, passages and see how it was originally translated and what the original words were. That's very important. Now, dictionaries. Do I use dictionaries? Sometimes I do. I use the Hebrew and Greek dictionaries and sometimes I may see what other people may have said in different dictionaries. Um, a lot of you may, be, um, uh, may know about this particular one. This is the Zondervan's Compact Dictionary. Um, pretty good, you know, just word. Basically, you go in, you research different words and everything, you know, but I like to use it for studying. Um, then I got several other ones here, too, that I like to use. There's another Hebrew Greek dictionary, um, New Testament Greek to Hebrew dictionary is what this one is called okay um, I got a complete concordance as a matter of fact I have a couple of concordances that have all of your Greek words and stuff interpreted in these books um, the Greek and Hebrew concordance is a huge one here and this thing catalogs every word that's in the Bible and it gives you the original Greek um, and Hebrew word and even the definitions of them okay um, and this is just another uh, dictionary here Vines Complete Expository um, Dictionary now uh, uh, some some of the dictionaries like this I don't really use too much because they're so Christianized you know what I mean it's just you know, I try to keep away I'm not a Christian so you out there if y'all don't know it you come across my video I'm not a Christian okay I get a lot of Christians that, that come and they join and, they, and then they're like oh wait a minute I thought you were a Christian. No, I'm not a Christian. Christians don't don't dress like this, okay? <laughs> so I'm not a Christian, okay? Uh, what am I? I'm a seeker of the truth. I'm a child of Yah. That's what I am, okay? A believer, a believer exactly. So, but anyway, there's different um, categories of books. I like to have dictionaries. I have a huge library, okay? First of all, let me say that. I love to read, Okay? There's a, there's a saying that people like to say about black people. They say, you want to have something from a black person? Hide it in the book. Hide it in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that, but my goodness. Probably some why we so low on the knowledge. We yeah. So low on knowledge. Yeah, a lot of people don't like to read. And reading, you know what? There's one thing that you can do to exercise your brain, and reading is one of them. Okay? Exercise that big muscle you have here. Okay? That brain, okay, and read. That's how you're going to get knowledge and understanding is through reading, okay? So buy books. Buy a lot of books. Uh, these books I have here I call historical books, okay? And they're basically just, some of them are apocryphal, missing books of the Bible. But just some of them are really dated old, 1853. This is a book about the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites. Um, come out of her, my people. And some of these are historical. Here's another one written in 1888, The Edomites. Um, pretty nice historical book. 
Uh, Josephus, the book of Josephus okay. is pretty historical. Um, uh, here's a really neat one, the Ibos of, um, is it Nigeria, I think it is? Uh, the Hebrew Exiles from Israel, but interesting book. Uh, Miseducation of the Negro, uh, which is actually, if I'm correct, this book was really written a long time ago, but they just re- um, did it uh i think it says here the actual publication i think it was in the early to mid 1900s when this first came out okay from babylon to timbuktu excellent book to read um if you watch white it out we put some information in there about it the destruction of black civilization is another excellent book by chancellor williams um, here's a historical book here, uh, Understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, I brought this one some 20 some years ago. But, you know, um, you might not be able to go out and buy a lot of books. I brought, I've accumulated these books over years, okay? I've been doing this thing for more than 30 years, so I've been, I've had a chance to accumulate some really good books. Um, the Jewish, the picture of his, picture of history of Jewish civilization. Okay, I find this very interesting book. It has some good information in here. Historical uh, book. Okay. Now, as for Apocrypha. So I want to go over some of these because a lot of you were asking me about these Apocrypha books. So, this is what I have here in Apocrypha. Okay. Um, the Book of Jasher. Yeah. Okay. Jasher. You like this one, don't you? <laughs> my son, you probably read this whole book, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah my son, he loves to read. He loves to read them, Chase, and he got an award. What was that award for how many books you read? <laughs> well, there's this reading competition they were having downtown here at yeah. the local library. Uh huh. And um, it was for the, um, an MP3 player prize or something like that. That's right. Well, let's just say I read the most books. How many books was it you read? More than 50 books. More than 50 books. <laughs> My son loves to read. If you got kids, make them read, you know. Instead of putting them in front of the boob tube, make them read. It's a little dark in here, so um, just put them in front of the, the tube, you know. This is the book of Enoch, okay. Another excellent book. Apocrypha. Buy it, you know. Now, this one here is called The Lost Books of the Bible, okay, which has some very interesting... Um, I think these are New Testament books. Yeah, some of these are New Testament books that are here. And these New Testament books uh, were, were included in the normal scriptures. So, I recommend, thank you, I recommend that you get these. Okay, um, the Lost Books of the Bible. Um, this one here is called the, the Forgotten Books of Eden, which are some more... Um, uh, missing books. Uh, here's another one called The Lost Scriptures. Um, you can just look up any of these titles I'm telling you. Just go to Amazon and look them up. You'll find them there at Amazon. Okay, The, the Lost Scriptures. Uh, this is probably my favorite. Okay. Um, it's called The Apocrypha. Including books from the Ethiopic Bible. Okay. This one has the Shepherd of Hermas in it. I talked to you all, a few of you all about the Shepherd of Hermas. Excellent book to read. I, I tell you, everyone that I've turned on to the Shepherd of Hermas was just thoroughly amazed at the at the book. Get this book here. This one will, will, will it'll tell you it's excellent reading. You know, um, it gives you good understanding to why things happening in a lot of people's life. Shepherd of Hermas. Uh, this is the Gospel of Thomas. Okay, another missing book. The Book of the Giants um, yeah. is really neat too. It deals with the fallen angels again. And, you know, this is actually can be read right along with the Book of Enoch. Okay, this one here is called The Lost Books of the Bible. Okay, you can look this one up on Amazon too. <clears throat> uh, this is just an atlas. And this is just a standard. Apocrypha from the King James, okay, which I have other others of the same. Now, the latest ones that I purchased was these two here. This this set here is a part one and two of them. They're very 
big and thick. You see them? But these are the pseudepigrapha. Okay? Love them. So far, I've been reading these and are absolutely just, my goodness, the, some of the things I come across. That, you, you know, the reason why I get into the Apocryphas is because when I was reading Joshua, the book of Joshua, and it mentions the book of Jasher, I said, oh, where's the book of Jasher? <laughs> then there are other books it mentions in the up it mentions in the New Testament I'm sorry in the Old Testament in the King James Version it mentions other books and you look through there you don't see these books okay then there, there are stories that you read in the King James and it seems like they are not complete they leave you guessing and you wondering what's going on what's going on here and there yeah when you get into the Apocryphas it answers a lot of the questions one of the books that I thought was extremely good was the Gospel according to Nicodemus. Excellent book because it tells you about what happens when Yahshua was crucified and how he went down into Hades. And it's just, you got to read it. It's incredible. It ties so much together. Even the scriptures, when you read the Old Testament, say, who is this? Who is this king of glory in the Old Testament? And this book ties all that together, and it's incredible. But I, I tell you, you, these are awesome books, you know. And and this is only, this ain't even half my life, Perry. Because like I say, I, I collect books, I read a lot. So I hope that this will cause some of you out there to start studying for yourself. Show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. You understand? Study to show yourself approved. That's what it says. You don't have to keep running out here to these fast food restaurants that's preaching on the internet. You know? <laughs> Get this food that's going to make you sick. You know? Stop. Yeah, spiritual McDonald's and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Some of it ain't even McDonald's, you know? Some of these like cracker joints, you know? You go there and get a little, get a little cracker and cheese. That stuff ain't going to hold you. A lot of them are serving milk, you know? Get in the word yourself, and I guarantee you the most high he will fill you. He will completely fill you. You understand what I'm saying? So I hope you all get this. Pick up your Bibles, buy you some books, read and study to show yourself approved. Okay? So on that note, I'm going to say shalom.